Uh, very good morning to you and uh, welcome to Core Finance. Uh, today I've got a COO interview and my guest is Bill Higgs, CEO of Ganell Energy. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Great Mark. to see you. Good to see you too. Great to see you. Uh, welcome to Core Finance. Um, I'd love you to give us an overview. For some people may not know too much about Ganell and obviously plenty of people will know, want to know more detail, but an overview uh, of Ganell for us. It would be great to start Yeah, off sure. With. Ganell is a London-listed uh, oil and gas producer. Uh, listed on the, on the main market and currently has a market cap of just under half a billion uh, pounds. We produce 30,000, slightly more than 30,000 barrels a day of production, uh, highly cash generative and low cost uh, production that's enabled us to deliver $142 million of cash flow last year. And that uh, strong balance sheet that we've uh, results from, from our uh, production assets enables us to, to make the most of our opportunities in our portfolio, which includes 2.5 billion barrels of contingent resources, the main assets of which are our Binabawi and Miran gas assets in Kurdistan. Excellent. Um, just to get one thing out of the way, because historically, Ganel is probably before your time as well, like Gunnell, but, but historically, um, potential investors had worried about the political you know, situation, the war, and, and more importantly, um, where you are in terms of you know, getting paid and so on. We'll come back to the, the payments a bit later on, but you know, um, are things are a lot better on the political front now. Yeah, I've been with the company for four months, and obviously it's one of the things that you, you look at when, before joining a new, a new company is uh, what is the uh, situation like for their assets and, and operations. And with predominantly having operations in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, it, it's something you look at, and I think it's something that everybody's aware of. Yeah. But the reality on the ground is that uh, we've produced, uh, uh, re reliably produced and exported crude from Kurdistan for over 10 years now, yeah. uh, having exported nearly half a billion barrels of crude from our two flagship assets there. Yeah. Uh, so very uninterrupted uh, uh, in spite of the you know, turmoil that's happened within the region. Excellent. Um, I think now what we'd like to do is uh, is talk about the, the finances side of it before we get onto the assets in detail. Um, you've mentioned cash flow and uh, and the debt and so on. So quick word on the cash flow. And I noticed that you recently had a, a bit of a restructuring of your debt position uh, yes. to make it in a more attractive, more efficient. Is that yeah. right? Yes. Um, so if you go back and look at uh, 2017, I think there's a landmark deal for the company was a solution to the receivable settlement agreement. So this was an outstanding receivables uh, from uh, selling uh, our crude oil to the Kurdistan regional government. And uh, that outstanding receivables was converted into a forward cash flow against our Torquay uh, PSC. And um, that uh, you know, has been booked in our 2017 accounts as being worth $425 million and, and on an incremental basis delivers about $10 million a month of additional mm -hmm. cash flow to the business. So that uh, was uh, helped underpin the overall uh, asset performance in, in, 20, in 2017, the $142 million of cash flow that has enabled us to um, write down or buy back some debt um, and actually refinance the debt at the end of the year so to such a position that we've uh, pushed the debt out to tw the end of 2022. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're now in a position where also, um, obviously, the, the cost of that debt um, on an annual basis, the interest costs have come down substantially, more than, more than 40%. And we're also in a position where um, the balance sheet sits with just over $100 million or so of, of net, net debt with a likelihood that by the end of next year we could even be cash positive. Yep. So a very strong balance sheet to be going into 2018. Excellent. And your receivables problem is sort of disappearing with those uh, regular payments. That's it's, right, it's yes. disappearing as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've been, we've been paid uh, you know, for 30 consecutive months, and we've been paid for the first six months of the receivables deal. It's all part of the same. It has, yeah. carries the same risk as our, our payments. And I think, you know, importantly, in spite of the challenges that have been uh, obviously in the region and for the Kurdistan yeah. regional government, the, the Kurdistan government wants to... Uh, support future investment and and it and it's a it's a virtuous circle yeah, in many ways. It's in both your interests to yeah, make it work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. We've done all those bits which to get that out of the want to get that out of the way first because now I want to talk about the the, the assets in a bit more detail. Yes. So uh, why don't you run me through? We've got uh, 
Torquay, Peshkabir, Tac Tac, and then yeah. the African assets. So why don't we run through yeah, some sure. detail? Yeah, so if, we've, if you look at the, you know, the, look at the business again today, highly cash generative oil business, uh, more than 30,000 barrels a day of production in, in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. That's uh, based against two, two PSCs. The, the one that's probably the, uh, the, the most well-known would be Tac Tac. Um, and I, would, uh, you know, I think a key thing here is that uh, it is a cash generative asset in spite of the history uh, that the, the asset's gone through. It's produced more than 210 million barrels of crude, so it's, a, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. been, a, it's been a good asset <clears throat> from that point. Um, the strategy now is, is very simply to, to take a look at how we maintain that cash generative uh, status. Um, we've um, managed to arrest the decline last year, and we've got some infill opportunities that have come as part of um, our drilling program last year, where we drilled a well on the flank of the field and found uh, found more hydrocarbons more deeply than we we had yeah. expected. Uh, so that's opened up a you know up a, opened up the opportunity for for infill drilling, um, and we're we're currently putting together the plans to restart drilling at Tac Tac in uh, in the latter half of this year. So that's good. Um, it's a good position to be yeah. in again. It's just you know, generate cash. Because tactic had been a problem sort of last year, unexpected <coughs> problem. The market was uh, concerned that uh, that it would it would go wrong, but in fact, it's you're beginning to pick it up. Particularly yeah, with, that's right. With the well drill. Yeah, stabilize the production, stabilize the reserves. So we had a slight positive add on two uh, p and a, a stronger yeah. positive add at uh, approved level. Um, so yeah, it feels like we've got <coughs> got that asset under yeah. control. You know these. These assets are fractured carbonates, uh, which are uh, notoriously difficult I know, to, I've been to there. predict. <laughs> yeah. um, so as a, as a consequence, you know, you've, you've got to pay a bit of attention to them, but we feel like we're in a good place with, with TAC TAC. And then the Torque PSC has, has two, two main fields in it. There's the, uh, the Torque field itself, which yeah. uh, has uh, you know, been, a, again, a reliable yeah. producer. It's produced over 200 million barrels of, uh, of crude to date. Um, it's uh, producing, you know, it's averaged more than 95,000 barrels a day last year. The asset as a whole produced nearly 110,000 barrels a day. So, um, so very, very strong uh, cash yeah. generative performance. And the, uh, you know, the, the reserves there continue to be very strong. Um, and then we have the uh, sort of exciting news at Peshkabir. Yeah, yeah now this is uh, very exciting. Yeah, isn't it? it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah two, we drilled two wells in Peshkabir last year uh, that proved up the, the Peshkabir anticline. It, um, and not only not only from a reserves point of view, um, moving uh, to a two p in the field of seventy five million barrels, but also from a productivity point of view, we've got two wells essentially producing over fifteen thousand yeah. barrels a day. Um, so uh, they are very um, very very cash generative uh, uh, barrels and investments, and and as a consequence, we have a lot of um, a lot of infill opportunity drillings and and uh, appraisal opportunities at Peshkabir. So we're going to be drilling six wells this year along the anticline. Um, they, they're, you know, very attractive uh, investments. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. You know, for every dollar we invest, we <coughs> we make about six or seven dollars in return. Um, and the payback on, in fact, the payback on all of our assets, uh, capital that we put in is we're, we're normally getting that capital investment back within six months yeah. uh, in terms of the PSC. So, uh, so you move to making returns very, very quickly, yeah. uh, which is great. Um, and we'll have that structure drilled up by the end of the year, um, which uh, we'll hopefully we'll see that reflected again in uh, additional performance yeah. and uh, in, in reserves. You know, the operator's goal is to try to get uh, Peshkabir to 30,000 barrels a day by the, by the summer. That would be pretty good, wouldn't it? It would be very good, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's a few, few challenges there, but that's okay. Well, yeah. uh, given that if you look at my numbers sort of back a year or 18 months, then, yeah, I didn't even have Peshkabir in there. Yes. At all. Yes. Yeah, so if you so, if you look yeah. at the the short short term driver of growth for for the business, it's at Peshkabir. Yeah. Um, and so as a, you know, one of the things we focus very much on as a as a management team is you know discipline capital allocation and and allocating our capital to the production assets. You know, more than seventy five percent of our capital is is going to production to generate cash and and therefore and we've got what I call healthy competition within the portfolio today. Uh, to attract capital, so you know yeah. they, it's it's very much getting drawn to Peshkabir, and it makes you make choices, uh, which are appropriate choices to make. Yeah, well, you need your next yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good. Now we've got Bina Barwi and Moran mm. talking about looking at things in a different uh, from a different angle. Yes, three or four years ago, I would have had these in as you know the long term producers of gas. You know the delivery probably for for Gunnell in two, three, four years time. 
But now I hear we've got some potential light oil into the bargain. Yeah, yes. So why don't we have a look at these assets in, yeah. the, in a bit of detail? Yeah, well. so, they, you know, so the key thing here is that we've got you know, very large gas assets in Binabawi and Miran. Uh, it's over 15 TCF of, of certified yeah. uh, of gas resources there, which comes with uh, about 140 million barrels of associated condensate, which yeah. belongs to the upstream business. So there's you know, great assets to have, and we've been, I think, very successful again in, in 2017 of moving those assets forwards um, in, a, in a commercially sensible way in the sense that we've got the PSC um, uh, resolved to, for, a, for a, a gas development as, as well as yeah. oil developments, which we'll come back to. Uh, we've got our uh, gas lifting agreement signed for the for the gas projects. Uh, that there's a buyer in Turkey who who, who wants right. to take the gas. So, yeah. you know, but it's a big big gas value chain play. You know, it's uh, five, so you've got the financing in place for the. You know, I mean, and the, what's the timing on on well, the I gas? Think the, the, you know, the, the tricky thing is that when we look at it from an upstream point of view, which is the bit that we own, yes. uh, it's remarkably um, it's a remarkably low risk project. Yeah, you know, we essentially have got no volume or price risk in the asset today, which is, you know, is amazing for an yeah. upstream asset uh, because we've got more than enough gas in the 1C resources to satisfy the gas lifting agreement. So it's a five TCF gas project. And we already know what the sales price is to the Kurdistan regional government. So um, the, uh, the bit, the bit of work that needs to be done is the, uh, is the uh, financing and construction of a, a midstream yeah. gas processing plant. And uh, um, and that's going to be built on the on the concept of a build, own, operate tariff model. Right. And so the Kurdistan regional government are you know, talking to uh, uh, companies that can provide that sort of, uh, of structure and uh, engineering um, uh, for for that uh, for that development. And that's the critical path for the project. You know, it takes and that's about what, three years. Yeah, I would yeah. say it takes about you know thirty six to forty months for yeah. the midstream project to be built. We could probably deliver the upstream in. Somewhere closer to twenty six months. So, yeah. so the you know the next real milestone is uh, is for us to uh, get to that FID on the midstream gas project. Yeah. And we in the in the short term that means that uh, Ganel can hold hold the gas assets as a low cost option. Yeah. Um, you know we don't need to sell sell the asset today. It's not going to cost us very much more to to take it through to FID. Uh, and that, and at that point is is always a much better place to uh, to sell the asset to create maximise shareholder. And the value. highly profitable um, wet stuff comes uh, as yeah. sort of as a bonus. <clears throat> yeah. So if you look at if you look at the um, you know so that that is you know was the new news in many ways when yeah. we did our CPR uh, earlier in the year was that we've we've got uh, thirty to thirty five million barrels of light oil particularly sitting at Binabawi. So it's a forty four to 47 API crude. We're about 30 kilometers from TAC -TAC yeah. infrastructure, so not very far away from our own, yeah. own infrastructure. Yeah. Um, and it's been tested. There, were the wells, there was a well drilled there that uh, tested the oil at uh, over 3,500 barrels of oil per day. So we know that it's, it's very mobile. Yeah. Um, and um, in the PSC that's been negotiated, we have a combined uh, favorable terms because yeah. of the fact is, it's considered to be a combined development. Yeah, so yeah. we combine the gas and oil together. Yeah. I think the key thing from a from a value proposition point of view is that that means that when we reach FID on the gas project today, we could move ahead with the FID on the oil project. Yeah, yeah. While it might be 36 to 40, 40 months until first gas, I can probably get oil up and running in six months. I think that FID will be the simplest decision you've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly, well, it's, you know, it's, yeah. and it's good, it's yeah. good to have that flexibility in the portfolio yeah. to be yeah. able to see that Absolutely. there's a, another sh a short-term, highly valuable cash generative yeah. uh, piece to the to the puzzle. Excellent. Now I know you've also got assets still in uh, in Africa. You've got Somaliland and Morocco. Yes. How are they fitting into the jigsaw at the moment? Yeah, I think again, if you go back and take a look at uh, look at 2017 and and um, uh, look at what we've done across the portfolio in terms of of maximising shareholder value. Mm -hmm. um, I think the commercial deals that we've struck last year were were excellent. Yeah. Yeah, whether it be the receivable settlement agreement in Kurdistan or the, uh, the um, negotiation with the Moroccan government to convert a, a well commitment into a seismic program, which is the right thing to do for the asset. So therefore, it's the right thing to do for the Moroccan government as well as yeah. ourselves. And we're moving ahead with a, a seismic acquisition program later this year. Yeah. Or to in the negotiations with the Somaliland government on, on getting them to acquire the, the uh, 2D seismic program that we shot last year and for us to, us to purchase it from them so that, yeah. so that we can move ahead. They were all 
uh, sensible ways to move the assets forwards. And I think of those, Somaliland is the one that we're you know we're most excited by. It it feels a bit like Kazakhstan. Uh, yeah, Kazakhstan feels a bit like uh, Kurdistan, Kurdistan living, yeah. uh, fifteen years ago. Yeah, and um, you know it's it's underexplored basins, Mesozoic basins that are akin to the to the uh, oil basins in uh, Yemen. Yeah. And uh, really hasn't been explored. We're, you know, we shot yeah. three thousand people have been reluctant to get into that part of the world. For well, it's all, yes, all the you know, it's, it's a discontinuity, isn't it? There's a technical <clears throat> yeah. technical discontinuity. These basins haven't been explored for for decades. You know, with yeah. the first seismic shot there in over twenty five years, yeah. and and so we're uh, you know we're leading the pack and uh, feel like we've got uh, you know a good position and we'll you know we will. Um, Build our in prospect inventory this year once we get the the process seismic yeah. bat, and then we'll then we'll take a look at um, you know what the the best strategy for value creation with Somaliland is. But uh, quite exciting, it's a Excellent. nice good. portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always ask about shareholders, and particularly uh, in your case, you've got an interesting shareholder list. You've got a cornerstone shareholder. You've got some very decent institutional shareholders, some of whom all the way back from the float, and you're getting a sort of growing band of retail uh, holders. How, how does the shareholder list look like? In the yeah, moment? I mean, it's, you know, if it feels like a it feels like a good place to be, as you say. Yeah. We've got some good cornerstone investors, which are both uh, you know institutional and and independent uh, um, regional regional players, um, who you know obviously like the story. I think you know it's always good to be in a position where you're you're. You know, share price has been growing you know, well yeah, over the last yeah. two years. We're probably at nearly come back to the share price at the end, I think. But it's um, looking good. But yeah. yeah, and uh, you, and you say we've. I think there's been a turnover in the register in the in the last few years, which has enabled us to have quite quite a lot of support yeah. across the value chain. So retail, as well as uh, other institutions coming in. The retail has added an interesting bit to the free float because I remember when I looked at the company two or three years ago, the worry was that you had because you had a big cornerstone and you had. Institutional investors have been there since the float and mm. seen the share price up at 10 quid and so on. They weren't going to move, but now there's more of a free float. We've seen a decent increase in the share price, and uh, well, I'll come back to that later and just ask you how you think it's going. It is, as you say, at a recent high, and the, and the chart looks great. And you've actually broken out of the chart on that front. But um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was the, the, the com how the board is, is made up because. You know, anyone, and everyone you know who knows Gunnar well enough has noticed that in the last year or so, the 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 the, the makeup of the board has changed dramatically. Obviously, uh, you know, you've you've come on board in the senior position. You've got a new chairman in Steve White. You know, what's the form on the? On the on the management on the board, well, I think it, you know it feels. I mean, it's part of the reason why why I joined, uh, say, four months ago, was it, it felt like uh, the company was in a it was in a turnaround a turnaround story, um, uh, and so we've got a you know some uh, new new chairman, new board members, uh, new management team, uh, predominantly with Esther and myself coming on to the to the management team, with uh, with you know Murat and 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 Paz, uh, Retaining that strong link back to our, you know, our Kurdistan yeah. roots. So Will it affect strategy at all uh, now that you, you think things are changing a bit? I think what what, what affects strategy is when you move from uh, survival mode into growth mode, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. You know, and and uh, again, you look at the receivable settlement agreement and our cash generation last year, the strength of the balance sheet, the refinancing of the bond. It's put us in a position where we can start talking about discipline capital allocation, about yeah. continuing to grow our cash generation, and then and then how do we, you know, yeah. you know, bet, so show, you've got, yeah. show continued discipline to, to generate growth. You know, so and you've got a good portfolio of long value achieving assets. Are you in a position where you might be considering acquisitions at the moment? Yeah, well, I think the the key thing is about uh, again focusing on that discipline and saying uh, we've got the balance sheet strength and the cash generation to to look to grow, and therefore uh, does an asset you know does that capital is it attracted best to an asset that's in the portfolio, or is it attracted? Better to an, another asset that isn't in the portfolio, <laughs> and being able to make those choices is, is a good choice to be able to make. Excellent. Yeah. Well, twenty minutes disappears in a flash, uh, as I always say, uh, and we're nearly at the end of the, the, the twenty minutes. I'm afraid, Bill, but uh, I never let anyone go without asking them the sort of final question, you know, the vision question for where you'd like to see Gunnell in a year or so's time. You know, a lot has a lot has changed, and you've got a lot of things going on, which you very kindly told us about. Where do you expect uh, to see, would like to see Gunnell in, uh, in 12 months' time? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it, it, you know, as I say, being in, a, in the position where we are, where we've got such a strong balance sheet and a very cash-generative business and some, in, you know, some very interesting options within the portfolio that we, we can see clear paths to moving those along 
uh, either from a short-term cash generation in our portfolio yeah. or from longer-term uh, options to, you know, ultimately we see a, a business that in 12 months' time will, will be generating even more shareholder value than it is today. And the shares are at a, at a recent high, but with, with lots of upside, I would contend. Yeah, we believe so. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Bill. Um, it's been a great pleasure to uh, interview and talk to uh, Bill Higgs, the COO of Gunnell Energy. Uh, we very much look forward to seeing you again on Core Finance. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.